open up in prayer. Please stand. Please be seated. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, the one God to whom praise is due forever, the Lord of the worlds, we thank Allah over and over again for Moses in the Torah. We thank him for Jesus in the Gospel. We thank him for Muhammad and the Holy Quran. Peace be upon these worthy servants of Allah who come in the great line of the vine. But as a black man who lives in North America, who never met Moses, Jesus, or Prophet Muhammad, I can never thank Allah enough for his intervention in our affairs. In the person of Master Fahd Muhammad, I thank him for his coming and raising up from us and in our midst, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the man whom we believe is the Messiah, and now is the exalted Christ. And in the name of the one that they left among us, that we see today a man who was our companion, he is our big brother, he is our champion of truth, he is the man who's giving hell to the enemy, and he's not selling out, he's not bowing down, he's standing up strong, soon to be 85, is that right? The only black man in America who's capable of carrying us on his shoulders with humility and faith in God, the man whom we believe who's sitting in the seat of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, we believe him to be a Messiah in the seat of the Messiah, the man who will get us to safely to the other side and give the praise to Allah as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said he would. The man whom the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said is the strongest national preacher in the bounds of North America, the one, the only, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Yes, it is always an honor, a privilege, a blessing that's very humbling to stand in his place and represent him, although I don't re represent him directly, I represent him through the man who represents him here in New York, and that man is the East Coast Regional Representative, Minister Abdul Hafiz Muhammad, whose office I am privileged to be a part of, and in the ministry class here in New York City, our East Coast Regional Headquarters. So it is always an honor, a privilege to stand here and to speak to the people of God and to greet you brothers with, and sisters with the greeting words of peace. As-salamu alaykum. How are you? Fine, Praise be to Allah. We want to thank you for your attendance tonight. It was very rainy today and uh, we expected a whole lot more people. And I know that it was difficult to travel. It's very misty and foggy out. It's kind of warm, but it's also kind of damp and cold. Yes, but praise be to Allah for your presence. Yes, you are here, I am here, and those who are on their way, inshallah. And we are filming this subject tonight, which is a very important subject. And I pray Allah that we will get through this subject successfully and that you will walk away with more than you had before you came. 
of spirit, of information, and inspiration. Our subject tonight is entitled, Dissatisfaction is the Mother of Change. Dissatisfaction is the Mother of Change. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said to us that nothing happens except by the will of Allah. Nothing occurs, takes place, or happens except by the will of Allah, whether good or bad. It only happens by Allah's permission. We have what is called Allah's active will, and we have what's called his permissive will. But no matter what happens or occurs, whether good or bad, whether good or evil, whether righteous or wicked, it could not happen except for the will of Allah. Whether he actively caused it to happen or he permitted it to happen. He is ultimately responsible for all action. So you may ask, well, are you saying, Brother John, that Allah commits evil? No, but he permits it for his divine purpose. And we want to talk about that tonight because a lot of times when we are dissatisfied, when we are upset, when misfortune befalls us or something that we don't rightly understand, we tend to become emotional. And if we either blame God or we blame someone else by not understanding the circumstances that takes place. So again, our subject tonight is dissatisfaction is the mother of change. And as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, nothing happens except by Allah's will, whether it's his active will or his permissive will. In the Holy Quran, Surah or chapter 13, verses 8 to 13, which are six verses Exactly. This chapter in Arabic is called Al Rad and the Thunder. Not lightning, but the Thunder. Section two, entitled The Fall and Rise of Nations. It says, Allah knows what every female bears and that which the wombs fall short of completion, and that which they grow, and everything with him has a measure. The knower of the unseen and the seen, the great, the most high. Alike to him among you is he who conceals the word, and he who speaks it openly, and he who hides himself by night, and who goes forth by day. For him are angels guarding the consequences of his deeds before him and behind him who guard him by Allah's command. Surely Allah changes not the condition of a people until they change their own condition. And when Allah intends evil to a people, there is no averting it. And besides him, they have no protector. He it is who shows you the lightning causing fear and hope and who brings up the heavy cloud and the thunder celebrates his praise and the angels too for all of him. And he sends the thunderbolts and smites with them whom he pleases, yet they dispute concerning Allah and he is mighty and proud. Now that's a whole lot of wisdom. And we wanna milk this as we attack this most important subject, dissatisfaction is the mother of change. I quote again from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who said, nothing happens except by the will of Allah, whether it is his active will or permissive will. Right. So if evil befalls us, if misfortune befalls us, if we become dissatisfied about something, we have to ultimately charge the responsibility to God, because either he caused it or he permitted it. Allah knows what every female bears. The 
The word bear means to carry. He knows what every female is carrying, whether it is a male, whether it is a female, whether it is a child of destiny or, or consequence. And that which is in the womb that falls short of completion and that which grows. He knows whether or not that child is going to come to birth or is not going to come to birth. This has spiritual significance. Just like Allah knows, as it says, with him everything has a measure. He knows whether we're going to stay in the process or we're going to jump out of the process. He knows how long, he knows when. It's already written. He's the knower of the unseen and the seen, the great, the most high. And it says, alike to him, right? Similar to the process in the womb and, and the spiritual womb or spiritual life, it says, among you is he who conceals the word and he who speaks it openly. Hmm? He who hides himself by night and he who goes forth by day. These are two types of people we're talking about. And for him are the angels guarding the consequences of his deeds before him and behind him, meaning his past and his future will be guarded by the choices he makes, whether he's pure or not. As it says, Allah brings up the heavy cloud. So as men of God and women of God start off not so clean, like the water is raining outside today, is that right? Yes. But tomorrow, Allah, the way this earth is designed, the sun will draw the water up into the earth's rotation or gravitation, mm -hmm. right? And it may not be pure, but as it ascends higher and higher, the debris will fall back to the earth and pure water will become vaporized and then drop back pure. Is that right? right? So it is with men and women of God. We don't start off so clean, but as he draws us up through the difficulty, through the process, we become clean. He says, he it is who shows you the lightning causing fear to some and hope to others. Lightning is a very interesting phenomenon. When we hear lightning, or we see, excuse me, the flash of lightning, they say that you can count how many seconds between lightning and thunder, and this chapter we're reading from is called the thunder, right? Between the lightning flash and the thunder, however many seconds will determine how many miles it is away. Is that right? You ever heard that when you were a little boy? You look at the flash, count how long it takes to go, and then you know how far of a distance that rain or storm cloud is from you. So he says, he it is who shows you the lightning, causing fear in some, hope in others, but he Allah brings up the heavy cloud. And the thunder celebrates his praise, and he sends thunderbolts and smites with whom he pleases. Men and women of God are sometimes referred to as thunderbolts. Is that right? We have a brother in Brooklyn, our Brooklyn representative here in New York. It's called the Son of Thunder. Is that right? But prior to him being called that, many were called thunderbolts and lightning rods and lightning bolts because they were the fire that came from the rostrum and from the wisdom of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in their form of unique expression. And we're like thunderbolts celebrating the praise of Allah, but at the same time, hurling truth that falsehood and knocking out his brains, Allah uses us to smite whom he pleases. Is that right? Okay, right. so we're on the same page. Our subject is dissatisfaction is the mother of change. On the flyer that promoted tonight's message, whether there's a crowd here tonight or not, there's a silhouette picture of a female, a black female, who looks pregnant. And in the head is written dissatisfaction, and in the womb is written change. Dissatisfaction, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us, is the mother of change. Why did you choose that subject and phrase it that way? 
The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan taught a subject called How to Give Birth to a God in the 80s. And in the final call administration building and here in New York when we were on Fifth Avenue, right from this roster. And he said to us that it is the thinking of the woman who, whose thinking affects the blood and the chemistry of her blood, therefore feeding the embryo that's attached to the uterus and the thinking of the female can affect the consequence of that which is in the womb. So in the same respect, dissatisfaction is the mother of change because dissatisfaction gives birth mm -hmm. to change. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the number six represents dissatisfaction, incompletion, and imperfection. I'm going to say it again. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that this, the number six represents dissatisfaction, incompletion, and imperfection. Our beautiful representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, Sister Minister Abel Muhammad, also said that the six also represents creation because creation is made on the six. As it says in the Holy Quran, in Surah 7, verse 54, that the universe was created in six periods of time. Is that right? Yes, so six is the number of creation, and six represents those three things, dissatisfaction, incompletion, and imperfection. Why does these three things represent the six? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that the universe is not completely round. There's nothing completely round in the universe. I see a bunch of bald heads tonight, but there's no head in here that is completely round. There's no seed, there's no atom, there's no cell, there's no fruit, there's no planet, there's no star, there's nothing completely round 360 degrees in this universe. Therefore, everything that appears to be perfect is imperfect and it has a wobble in its nature. So, because the universe is created imperfect, and Almighty God Allah, the originator, wanted and desired perfection and called for perfection from the beginning, it would be a process of time to move from imperfection to perfection. And as the Quran says, we are complete yet incomplete. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Donald Elijah Muhammad said that the number seven represents perfection. So in between the six and the seven is the process from imperfection to perfection. Just like he said, the number zero represents nothing and one represents God. And if you study the zero and how the zero became one, you're studying how nothing became something. Huh? Okay. And he said the two is duality, which represents the duality in the nature of God, which is God and devil, or good and evil, in the nature of every human being. And as we move through time, and the universe is searching and groaning and moaning toward perfection, there's a constant wobble and friction that take place. Right, right. Once you reach perfection, there's no longer a wobble. Right. There's no longer friction. It's a smooth ride, and it's a perpetual motion. But between six and seven, it is a friction struggle. that struggle, a difficult process mm -hmm. in order to get out of that loop of the wobble into a smooth ride of perpetual motion. All right? So, imperfection. That which is imperfect has a wobble. That which is imperfect is incomplete. That which is imperfect or incomplete causes dissatisfaction. And when we enter into dissatisfaction, we experience difficulty. We experience misfortune. We experience trial. And many times, dissatisfaction, difficulty, misfortune, and trial can knock us off our post, can abort 
the process of not just physical life, but also spiritual life. We're talking about dissatisfaction is the mother of change. Imperfection to perfection is a process, and that process takes time. It is a difficult process, it is a difficult journey, and it can take a long, long time. So, the question is, if we all are going to experience dissatisfaction, and dissatisfaction is the mother of change, or that which gives birth to change, whether that dissatisfaction is healthy or unhealthy is still going to produce a change. Just like if a female is pregnant, she's going to produce something, but based on her thinking and what she does and her activity will determine whether that child is healthy or unhealthy. Is that right? We all heard of an unhealthy and a healthy pregnancy, right? So spiritually, what we're talking about is a spiritual birth process in which we're undergoing a journey and a trial to become one with God. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said the day of judgment, which is now, is the day when self tells the truth on self and when we become face to face with God. Is that right? Yes, By studying self, we become face to face with God because we study the weaker forms of ourself and the strength within ourself. And as we go through these trials and experiments of how do you live, fasting, paying charity, prayer, coming to the moms, thinking right, doing right. Sometimes we're on our end game and sometimes we fall off, is that right? And when we fall off, we get back on and keep on trying, keep on striving. And we open up in our prayer, we say, surely I am being turned to thee, is that right? Striving to be upright, because we've been unjust to ourselves. So it's a process. Allah God, in the Quran, is called Rabil Alameen the nourisher of a thing unto perfection. Which means he desires perfection for us in this form, not when we return. We say, oh, he returned to the essence. Believing in returning to the essence in physical form while you live, not when you die, become one with God consciously is the goal. But it is a process. So anything that is incomplete, Anything that is imperfect, anything that is undone, anything that is unaccomplished and unfinished breeds dissatisfaction. It can't be perfect. How can you be satisfied with something that's incomplete? How can we be satisfied with something imperfect? How can we be satisfied with something undone, unaccomplished, or unfinished? Is that possible? Let's use some examples. Most of us who are on the animal plane think about food, clothing, and shelter. Like animals. They think about when they're going to eat, where they're going to live. <laughs> I don't know about clothing, but those of us who are in survival mode think about food, clothing, and shelter. That's all we think about. We ain't got no time for no creative God power because we're trying to think where we're going to live, where we're going to eat, what we're going to wear. Is that right? So, Think about a meal. We have some brothers who cook, sisters. Yes, sir. Somebody cook you an unfinished meal. Huh? How would you feel? Would you feel satisfied? Somebody cook you an incomplete meal. You know what I mean? They give you the, the bean soup, you know? Like popcorn. Partial salad. <laughs> and you want to know, well, where's the entree? Huh? Did I get something to drink? Will you be satisfied? No, sir. You'll be thankful, but you won't be satisfied. What about clothing? Can you come out the house half dressed? <laughs> will, will you be satisfied? <laughs> Some, <was up>. Some will. <laughs> savage. That's right. Absolutely. Half of our sisters are half dressed. Right. Incomplete. Huh? Incomplete. Although it may be attractive to a person of a, of a lower level, but even after you acquired that and you experiment with that, you still are left unsatisfied. That's right. Is that right? That's a fact. Shelter. 
like talking about fruit clothes in the shop. What does an incomplete house look like? No heat. No heat? No woman. No furniture. Is that right? That's right. The Quran says man should be married, man should not be alone. Is that right? That's right. Women need a husband. How does she feel without no men? Hmm? Mm -hmm. She feels insecure, although Allah is sufficient for her, but it's natural for her to have a man, to maintain her. Is that right? As the Quran says, man is the maintainer of woman. So, an incomplete house. How about structurally, physically? Mm -hmm. You said no heat. Huh? Are we satisfied? No, sir. No, sir. That's so why we're working now. Is that right? Come on now. Let's use higher levels of expression. Come on now. Music, color, and medicine. What is an incomplete sound of music like? Hmm? Somebody starts off a song and they get through it and, and, and then just shut it off. You're not satisfied with that. You want to know how it, how, how it started, what the middle was, and what the climax of the song is. Is that right? Even in music, you have seven notes. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti. I'm Mr. Lewis Farrakhan, who's a master musician, teaches us that T, the seventh note, is an unresolved note. T is begging for something to happen. T, and what happens? It goes right back to door again, like as it was in the beginning, so shall it be at the ending. But Mother Tanya Muhammad, may Allah be pleased with her, teaches us that there's a missing note in music. And she said that the missing note in music is the sound of nature. Very interesting. What about color? What does an incomplete painting look like? Would you be satisfied with that? An incomplete picture. Somebody take a picture of you and half, <laughs> half, you, half of you are in the picture. Or they cut off your head. Are you satisfied with that? No, sir. So dissatisfaction is the mother of change. It is a natural process. Again, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that nothing happens except by the will of Allah, whether it is his active will or his permissive will. Now let's go a little deeper. Where did this dissatisfaction after the originator set it in motion come up and take place? And where could we draw some examples that we can use in our lives to stay on our post and outsmart this enemy within and the one that's without. 66 trillion years ago, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that God walked among the people. He wasn't a mystery, he wasn't unknown, he wasn't a secret. And we were 35,000 miles in circumference at that time and we were the second closest to the sun and that Mars was our moon. He teaches us that one of the scientists or elders wanted the people to speak the same, not language, but dialect. dialect. See? Study that word dialect. And because he couldn't get what he wanted, he became dissatisfied. And not only was he dissatisfied, he became frustrated and he became imbalanced. Now, let's just think about this. Anybody ever been down south? Yes, sir. Okay. Anybody ever been out west? Yes, sir. Okay. So you know that if you go down south, the language may be the same language, but it's a different dialect. Is that right? Yes, sir. We may say horse up here. They may say hearts. Is that right? Yes, sir. It's a different twang. It's a different sound, right? Even some of our Boricua family on Fallen Road have a different kind of sound to their English expression, is that right? And they call it Spanglish, is that right? Yes, sir. So it's almost impossible based on atmospheric pressure to speak the same exact dialect. But brother wanted what he wanted, couldn't get what he wanted, and he became frustrated and disappointed. And in his disappointment, right, see, his dissatisfaction 
again, healthy versus unhealthy, moved into disappointment, and then disappointment became frustration. And frustration caused him to get angry, and from what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us, he drilled the hole into then called moon and set it off. Now think about this. I said, nothing happens by or without the will of Allah. Is that right? right? Either his active will or his permissive will. You can't drill a hole into the earth's core without nobody knowing about it. You can't even be outside here working on the pipes. Is that right? You can hear that. So you mean to tell me this brother drilled a hole into the almost there near the center of the earth and nobody knew what was going on? Nobody said, what are you doing? Did not God or Allah, the supreme being at that time, 66 trillion years ago, know that he was drilling? How could we know that someone's outside drilling for Con Ed in the middle of the street, but, but God didn't know he was drilling a hole into the earth? And if he knew he was drilling a hole into the earth, why didn't he stop him? That's the question. Again, nothing happens except by the will of Allah. His active will or his permissive will. So if he knew he was drilling the hole, he permitted him to drill the hole, why did he let it happen? His intention was to kill us all. And many died, except for what Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, the tribe of Shabazz. The word Shabazz, Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us, means the non-destructible. And if you break the word down Arab, Arab, in Arabic, Shah means ruler, and Baz is a bird like falcon. So it's like a ruling bird. Huh? That and that Mother Tarnetta, as Brother posted on Facebook a, a few days ago, bore witness to what I just said, but she just said it a little differently. It represents that phoenix that has a way of, of rising up from its own ashes and reproducing itself. You can't destroy us like matter and come energy. On, One on. turns into the other. That's it's right. neither created or destroyed That's right. when it's on. given purpose. Yes, sir. Everybody all right? Yes, sir. We're talking about dissatisfaction is the mother of change. Let's move from 62 trillion years ago to 50,000 years ago. Another scientist named Shabazz wanted to bring our people into West Africa, into the jungles, and master the jungle life. No one had done that at that point. We lived in the eastern area of what was called Egypt or Kemet or Kush, Ethiopia, and we were jet black with straight hair. The Honorable Elijah Mama teaches us that our eyebrows and eyelashes are straight because that's how we originally looked. And to this day, there are original people over there who have straight hair, black, black, blue, black, with straight hair, and we have the kinky hair because of the mark of Shabbat. Mm -hmm. Listen. The scientists did not agree with him, but Shabbat saw something that they did not see, and before they told him, or excuse me, after they told him no, they told him, well, you can do that, but you can't do it here. So they permitted him. Here we go again. They permitted him. They knew it was going to happen. Why did they permit it? So we have two situations. One, drilled the hole. It was permitted and blew that moon out there. And we have now that moon to this day is out there creating a high, low tide and high tide, having a magnetic pull on the waters of the earth, even affecting the feminine cycle. Is that right? Even yes, affecting somebody, some water in the brain. That's where we get the term lunatic from the <laughs> lunar cycle. Is that right? Hey, so Shabazz took us into the jungle, mastered the jungle. Some of us broke off into tribes and sects. You have the short ones where the, the ferns were called the Hottentots, who were short and fat. You got the tall, lean ones up by Mount Kilimanjaro and the Kenyans and the Watusi with the wide nose where it was real hot. We all took on different forms based on the ecological structure and environment. Is that right? That's right. And just like 66 six trillion years ago, we all spoke a different dialect. <laughs> we're talking about dissatisfaction as the mother of change. So Shabazz disagreed with the rest of the scientists 
and not only disagreed, he was defiantly determined. See? So the first one, 60 years, 66 trillion years ago, excuse me, became disappointed and frustrated after his dissatisfaction. The second one, who was dissatisfied, disagreed, and became defiantly determined to go into that jungle and master that jungle. It was permitted because were we not in that jungle and becoming so close to nature. That's right. Come on. That's right. For that long, mm -hmm. once the Caucasian man that who came onto the planet right. came and got us, we would not have been able to survive right. what he was going to do to us right. for these 400 years. Yes, sir. They could not see that. He could. Maybe they did see that. Either way, it was permitted. Nothing happens except by the will of Allah. The Indian, 16,000 years ago, That's right. and I call him the Indian because on page 107, the message of the black man, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad calls him the Indian. In your lessons, he's called the Indian with the two million Indians. Is that right? That's right. And we don't call him the Indian in the way that Columbus called him the Indian because Columbus was sailing west looking for India, and when he landed here, he realized that he wasn't in the east, he was in the western part, but he went back and told Queen Elizabeth, I found some Indians. <laughs> and now we running around calling ourselves West Indians. No, sir. But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad referred to the red man, although he's really not red, he's really black. But we call him the red man, it's because he rebelled. He rebelled in India when the knowledge of God became a mystery or a secret hidden from the people, they began to worship all kind of idols and stones and statues, Hanuman and Hick and Hinduism came and Buddhism came and we ran him out. So his dissatisfaction turned into doubt and his doubt caused disunity. And he went over the Bering Straits, some stopped, in Alaska, some kept going all down through North America, some kept going all down through Central and South America, and we have a people that all look the same from Alaska all the way down. Is that right? That's right. Dissatisfaction is the mother of change. 6,000 years ago, a man was born out of the 30% dissatisfied at that time. His name is Yakub. He is not an evil scientist. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a scientist. That's right. Not an evil one. That's right. He was a scientist who was born, check this, not emotionally dissatisfied. He was born out of the thinking of the dissatisfied at that time, and he was born with a determined idea. You could say predetermined. That's right. Because it was the condition that gave him that determined idea. That's right. uh, prophets, inventors, scientists are born into the world out of the thinking and the longing of the people. In your family, if there's a longing, if there's a need, your family will produce that which is desired. In a nation, a nation will produce that which is desired. A community will produce that which is desired based on the dissatisfaction, percentage, and intensity of what's needed. So all of us are not born out of happenstance. All of us, as I read earlier from the Quran, Allah knows what she bears. He knows what's coming to birth and what's not going to come to birth. We all have a purpose. Whatever that purpose is, it's put it within us. It's a gift from God put in us for us to mine and find out and give it back to him. Who will offer Allah a goodly gift? Is that right? That's what it says. You have to go inside and find out why you're here and then give it back. And you give it back by serving your fellow man. So, let me read to you something real quick on one page 111 in Message to the Black Man from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He says on page 111, Mr. Yaqub was naturally born out of the 30% dissatisfied, as we know, wherever there is longing or demand for change, nature will produce that man. Wherever, Wait. in the Bronx, 
in Harlem, in Mosque number seven, wherever nature will produce that man who will bring it about. Allah taught me that the present percentage of dissatisfaction is 98%. This was 1965. Near 100%. And if you read Fall of America, when he wrote that, he said it already hit 100%. Hmm. Yaqub did not bring about 100% change, right. but near 90% by making the Caucasian dumb. Everybody all right? Yes, sir. All right. I'm going to get back to Mr. Yaqub in a minute. Dissatisfaction is the mother of change. Y'all ready for this? Yes, sir. 84 years ago, nearly 84 and a half years ago, which is 1933, on October 30th, Wallace D. Muhammad was born, son of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Master Farah Muhammad wrote his name on the back door, W. D. Muhammad. He never put the Farad in it. Farad means obligated or obligatory, which means we weren't obligated to follow him. He was born out of his mother's dissatisfaction. I'm not being disrespectful. The right. Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan taught on this. Yes, We're talking about dissatisfaction is the mother of change. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad who was selected by the God at that time. They were envious of him. They were jealous of him. And he had to move real secretively. They had a school. The police was attacking them. They arrested the God. He laid down a demonstration for the messenger to show him what he had to go through. And all of this caused trouble in the house. Abu Elijah Muhammad wasn't always home. He had to be real secretive when he was home. His family suffered. Come on. And in suffering, and in the, from the thinking of Mother Clara, who's a new Muslim, huh? who's being persecuted, all of those thoughts, all of those feelings, all of those emotions went right into that child that was in the womb. And Master Farah Muhammad said, he will be a great helper to you one day. He never said how. If you ever listen to some interviews by Amir Mahdi Muhammad, he would talk about the spoiled bean soup that he had to eat as a child. And he never believed that picture of that man on the wall was God. He never believed it. That's right. That's right. He was born to think like that. So, as he grew, he bit Malcolm when he got out of prison. He's the one who told Malcolm about the domestic life of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yes, sir. He bit Malcolm. Mm -hmm. And when Malcolm was assassinated, he came running back and asked and apologized and asked to be resubmitted. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad made him ask the whole nation. And if they accept you, they will. I'll accept you back. Knowing that he still wasn't going to stay. Yes, so, in 1975, when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad appeared to be dead, Wallace D. Muhammad drilled the hole <laughs> into the nation of Islam and filled it with high explosives oh, and set it off because he wanted us all to speak the same dialect or yeah. language of Arabia from Sunni or Orthodox Islam. Yeah, like Shabazz 50,000 years ago, he wanted to take us in a whole new direction huh? under the guise of it being new teachings. It can't be new teachings if it's 1,400 years old. And like the Indian, he rebelled. And we began to break off into sects and methabs and schisms. Is that right? That's right, sir. Yeah. Wallace D. Muhammad. His name means, Wallace means a stranger. So you got a stranger, and then you got, he changed his name to Warith Udin Muhammad, right? Which means, Warith means an inheritor. So he considered himself the inheritor of the deen or the inheritor of the religion of Muhammad, right? Of Prophet Muhammad. But he, was, he came with a strange deen, is what he did. He died at the age of 74. And I was reading in the Quran in Surah 74, and I'm going to try to make this quick. Surah 74, verse 8. For when the trumpet is sounded, Minister Farrakhan, the trumpet. 
that will be that day a difficult day for the disbelievers anything but easy. Allah says, leave me alone with him who I created. That reminds me of Surah 113 where it says, I seek refuge in Allah, I seek refuge in the Lord of the dawn from the evil of that which he created. See? Leave me alone with him who I created. I gave him vast riches, an $80 million empire, and sons dwelling in his presence, and made matters easy for him. And yet, he desires that I should give more. By no means, surely he is inimical to our messages. The word inimical means tending to obstruct or harm, harmful, injurious, detrimental, damaging, destructive. Everybody all right? Yes, sir. Dissatisfaction is the mother of change. All right. I said earlier, the Honorable Minister Bruce Farrakhan said, nothing happens except by the will of Allah. His active will or his permissive will. Either he causes it to happen, come on, stay with me, y'all. I know it's getting heavy. Or he permits it to happen. 85 years ago, on May 11th, the same year, six months apart, and, and by the way, Wallace was born 20 miles outside of Detroit. Like Yakub was born 20 miles outside of Mecca. Mm. Hamtramck, Michigan, where he was born, is exactly 17 miles, approximately 20 miles outside hey. of Detroit. Hey. All right? The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was born on May 11, 1933, approximately 600 miles east of Detroit, in the Bronx, New York. Your brother from the east wants to hear from you at once. At the age of six, he was at his uncle's house, just like Mr. Yakub had a conversation with his uncle. And he looked into the face of a black man who was Marcus Garvey at that time and wanted to know who is this man on the wall over the mantle? Because I've never seen that before. Usually we have a Jesus or you know a white Jesus or someone, Queen Elizabeth, especially if you're from the West Indies. And his uncle told him, Marcus Garvey, who he was, what his movement was about, and that he was no longer with us. And the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan began to cry. Because he was looking for the man who would make a new people. Hmm? He himself wanted to be involved in the process of making a new people from the Negro that the white man had made. I'm linking him to the mind of Yakub and dissatisfaction. Everybody all right? Yes, sir. Just like Yakub finished all the universities by the age of 18, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in his 18th year in the Nation of Islam, which is 1973, had reached pretty much his height in the ministry. When the messenger, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, a year later referred to him as a star without equal. He graduated the class. He was the valedictorian of the yes, class. Yes. A year prior, he pulled him before the whole nation right. and edified him, mm -hmm. anointed him, right. told us to follow him, is that right? Yes, and sir. sat him in his seat. He didn't do that to nobody else. Let me read to you on page 113 real quick. Something very interesting. Beautiful, beautiful. Regar re regarding Mr. Yakub, and think of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and those who represent him. He began teaching Islam with promises of luxury to those who would believe and follow him. As Mr. Yakub continued to preach for converts, he told his people that he would make others work for them. This promise came to pass. Naturally, there are always some people around who would like to have others do their work. Those are the ones who fell for Mr. Yakub's teachings 100%. And so it is today. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan stood up to do this work 40 something years ago. And 
Many stood up with him to follow him, to walk with him, as we have. And there are many who enjoy the benefit of being his representative, being his follower, whether we're ministers, captains, secretaries, whatever position or role. And there are some, we're talking about dissatisfaction now, who benefit from the work of others, whether they get the credit or not. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan represents leadership to us. And his style of leadership is the way, is the hadith, if you will. We don't necessarily follow the hadith of Prophet Muhammad. We follow the way of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Mm -hmm. He's in our midst for a reason. That's right. <laughs> the name Farrakhan means, comes from the root Farrakhan, which means discrimination, not in a sense of anti Semitic or homophobic, but discrimination in a distinguishing sense where he distinguishes right from wrong, truth from falsehood, the right way from the wrong way, the new Islam from the old Islam. He's the distinguishing factor, that he's the Farrakhan factor that we have to line up with. He's a barometer. The barometer, the compass. Yes. Yahweh Elijah Muhammad said, this is one of the strongest national preachers that I have in the bounds of North America. Go where he says go. Look at him. Listen to him and stay away from where he says stay from. Is that right? That's an order. Come on. So he's the criterion. He's the standard. He's the way. He's the example. He's the pattern that we must cut out and follow. He's the cloth. No, we're, we're cut from the same cloth that we follow, Your Honorable Minister. That's right. That's right. We should say that in the street. I'm cut from a different cloth. Is that right? But if you follow him, you're cut from a different cloth. The cloth, which is the coat of Joseph, which wore many colors. Is that right? Good point. Right. Good point. So leadership must be measured by the example of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. If it is not in line with him, there's going to be dissatisfaction. Bad leadership is like bad sex. No disrespect, I'm not being vulgar. But you know, when you think you're doing something, <laughs> and you ain't doing nothing, and whether she tells you or not, it's better for her to tell you that you ain't doing nothing because you'll keep on going as if you're doing something. That's right. And she'll be dissatisfied and you'll think that you did something. Right. Come on. It's just like dancing. You ever see somebody who can't dance? Yes, sir. And they swear they can, they dance? can dance? I don't, I don't mean no disrespect, okay. but Sister Mary J. Blige. You mm -hmm. see poor Mary up there on that stage. Right. And you be Mary, sit down somewhere. Mariah smart. Mariah just lean and let somebody carry her, right? Because right. she knows she can't dance. Right. But that's how we are in leadership. When we're ineffective, when we're not hitting the mark, when we're not in tune, when we're not on our A-game, when we're not fasting, when we're not praying, when we're not paying our charity, when we're not thinking right, when we're up, caught up in our ego, when we're hurtful to people, we think we're doing something. No. Like in the bedroom, but we ain't doing nothing. Mm. We think we're dancing and moving and got the crowd second, but we ain't doing nothing. Farrakhan is the compass. If we follow his way, not just acting like him on the podium and getting fiery, right. but loving Living. people, being a humble right. servant, right. showing respect, respecting and protecting the black woman, loving each other and treating each other the way he would treat us and yes. we would treat him. Dissatisfaction right. is the mother of change. I'm gonna to try to finish this. Everybody all right? Yes, sir. Again, nothing happens except by the will of Allah, his active will, or his permissive will. So there's global dissatisfaction. We all know this. We see this yes. on the news. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, there's sir. national dissatisfaction. We see this on Come the on. news. We have a president who represents a different form of leadership. We have the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and then we have the present day governmental leadership. Two different styles. Which one are we lined up with? Okay. Which one do we mirror? Which one do we reflect? Good point. Something to go home and think about. Yes, sir. Especially if you want to be in leadership, yes, sir. whether it is a lieutenant, a secretary, or whatever. Just being a follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, you're in leadership. Make sure you're right. 
Whether you're just a rank and file in the community, you are in leadership. That's oh. right. That's right. There's local dissatisfaction also. But there's global dissatisfaction and there's global pacification. There's national dissatisfaction, there's national pacification. Just like there's local dissatisfaction and there's local pacification. And pacification is not dissatisfaction. Pacification brings like a pacifier. You, it's not the real thing. Pacification brings about a range, but it's a limited height. Dissatisfaction brings about a change. We have examples. We got six presidents the Honorable Minister Lucifer Khan gave to us. Reagan, Bush, Clinton, Bush, Obama, and Mr. Trump. That's on a national level. On a local level, not the mayor of New York City. Let's take it right here to Mars number seven. That's right. We got six examples. That's right. You could say it's eight, but, the, the, but two of them were only temporary. Minister Kareem, Sister John's father, Abdullah Muhammad, Khalid, Conrad, Benjamin, and Minister Hafiz. That's six. In between, Abdullah Khalid, you had Akbar, but it was only temporary, and he got ill. And then Minister Hafiz Uba Kevin came after that, was only temporary. So you, they're like minor prophets in a sense. But the sixth major was Kareem, Minister Kareem, Abdullah Khalid, Conrad, Benjamin, Hafiz. Studied them. And the thing is, dissatisfaction brings about a change. There's always going to be dissatisfaction. You can't please everybody. But you have to settle on the best part of a thing. Go ahead. And if the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan appointed someone, whether you're satisfied or dissatisfied with their performance or the outcome, that's right. whether something is undone, unfinished, incomplete, that's, right. that's causing dissatisfaction or not, you have to work through it. Right. Don't become imbalanced there like Shabbat. Don't split off there like the go. other Shabbat. Yes, Don't go off into tribes and sects like the Indians. Right. Hang in there, right, right. do your dissatisfaction, right. and you bring about the change. There you yes. go. See? There you, go, you bring it about. You on it. Mm. There's dissatisfaction in Atlanta. There's dissatisfaction in California. Yeah, There's dissatisfaction in Boston. Yes, There's right. dissatisfaction in New York. Dissatisfaction has to go to war with doubt, disagreement, disappointment, frustration, disrespect, and disunity. We need healthy dissatisfaction, not unhealthy dissatisfaction. Yes, sir. I'm almost finished. Yes, sir. Everybody all right? Yes, sir. The MGT are dissatisfied mm. for many reasons. Right. The FOI are dissatisfied right. for many reasons. Many. The youth that we're producing right here in New York. Many of them are dissatisfied. They are saying that the nation won't even be around in the next three years. Some, some of the believers' children, they think like this. Right. Some of them are questioning their parents, why are you still messing with that? Wow. Some of them recently said, in this class, wow. where are we going? I don't, what am I doing here? Dissatisfaction is the mother of change. That's right. The believers, the people, nationally and globally, are tired of pacification. Pacification, as I said, brings about a range when dissatisfaction brings about a change. And here we are, like 1975, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said there were some unsavory like yeah. characters around the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's right, that's what he said. Unsavory means distasteful. Mm -hmm. huh? We don't want to be like this. If we are dissatisfied, we have to pray to Allah that we hold fast to Islam. We don't want to go the route. We love Brother Khalid and all his good, and we settle on the best part, but we don't want to go that route. We love Malcolm and all his good, but we don't want to go that route. That's right. We want to hang in there and not be aborted. Come on. Because we disagree or we're disappointed or we're dissatisfied. Right. Don't worry about who you're dissatisfied or what you're dissatisfied with. You bring about the change that's needed. That's right. 
Come on. I'm going to close with a few words. He, Allah, makes all things new. He, Allah, makes all things new. Yes, sir. And Islam comes after everything else has failed. Yes, Obedience to God comes after everything else has failed. And Allah will never change the condition or the position of a people until they change themselves. So what is the antidote? It's real simple. Given to us by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in 1995. Second Chronicles verse 7, excuse me, chapter, uh, Second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. If, conditional, my people who are called by my name, the one that wear Muhammad, shall do what? First, humble yourself. Humble yourself. Don't put yourself over people. Stop talking about yourself so goddamn much. Huh? Push Farrakhan, not yourself. This ain't about us. It's about us, but it ain't about I. Excuse me. Huh? Humble yourself. Get below your brother. Treat him like the weight that you respect. You don't snatch that weight up. You get underneath it and get it up. Is that right? Humble yourself. Don't take yourself so serious, but be serious. Because you'll be here today, going tomorrow. That's right. Allah chooses whom he pleases. And he blesses whom he pleases. And he says, he who humbles himself, Allah will do what? He will exalt. He who exalts himself, he will obey. I'm talking to me, and I want you to say that to you. I'm not attacking anybody, yeah. but I'm attacking those who ain't in line with Minister Fowler. That's right. And the truth is, they attacking themselves, and we'll be attacking ourselves. Come on. Humble yourself and pray, and seek my face. How do you seek God's face? <laughs> How do you seek God's face? Hmm? Face to face with God. That's it. Mm -hmm. This teaching was given to us that we may master self, and by mastering self and knowing self, we become face to face That's with right. God. That's right. And turn from your wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and heal your land. We all need a healing. That's right. That's right. Whether it's through Dianetics, auditing, whether it's through therapy whether it's through counseling, whether it's through the study guide, Come whether on. it's through prayer, whether it's through just loving yourself. Practice. And structurally, we need a healing, man. Come on, Economically, we need a healing. Socially, we need a healing. We need a healing in the brotherhood. We need a healing in the sisterhood. We need a healing in our marriages. We need a healing to reconnect with our youth. We have to go and get our people, man. But if we ain't on, if we're not, excuse me, on the path like we should be, we're going to be ineffective and think we're up there like Mary doing something. <laughs> and the sad man's going to have to come and get us because dissatisfaction is the mother of change. Thank you for listening and may Allah bless you. Light of understanding. And I just want to quote one more thing from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He said, dissatisfaction has reached such a percentage that it is bound to bring about universal war. That is internally and that is externally. Dissatisfaction is the mother of change. All praise due to Allah. Thank you for listening. At this time, I'm going to ask Brother Arthur A. to come forward and close us out in prayer. Pray a lot that I said something that inspired you and informed you. And if anything did, all praise due to Allah. Any mistakes that I made, if I hope I didn't offend anybody, but the mistakes are definitely my own. And I'm striving for perfection. Yes, sir. I got it.